Brexit, the UK's window of opportunity to do a great US trade deal. Uh, let's talk to our good friend Mark Francois, Conservative MP for Rayleigh and Wickford in Essex, Deputy Chairman of the European Research Group. We haven't talked to you, Mark, for ages. James, you haven't. And uh, forgive me correcting you, but it's now Chairman of the European Research Group. Oh, no. oh right. Yeah, who did you get sacked? No, no, no. Steve Baker, who was the chairman, yeah. uh, stood down uh, of his own volition. Mm -hmm. How and, did you get him to do that? Um, <laughs> at, at a meeting of the of the group, I was uh, well. Steve recommended me to take the chair, and the group approved. So this yeah. is I wouldn't call it hot news because I don't think it's going to stop the world. But uh, as of this evening, I'm now the chairman. Anyway, um, coming on to your your point about um, you know trade deals. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a fantastic opportunity for the UK. One of the advantages of leaving the European Union is that we can strike trade deals of our own. When we were under the EU, we could only do trade deals, as it were, through them. We can now do trade deals with, you know, any country on Earth if they and we <clears throat> agree. And obviously, the potential of a trade deal with the United States who are our strongest ally on Earth, is very exciting. And are we uh, are we halfway to doing it? Are we involved in doing it, Mark? Or, or are we just sitting back talking about it? Well, my, my understanding, Jack, is that actually over the past uh, year or so, a lot of, you know, discussions have gone on privately about the possibility of a deal. Mm. So I don't think we've got one, you know, it's not like Blue Peter where there's one below the desk we're just about to pull up, as it were. But I think we already have made some progress. And um, uh, Liz Truss, the uh, Trade Secretary, and also President of the Board of Trade, mm. um, made a statement in Parliament uh, yesterday. I was there announcing, you know, the formal beginning of negotiations. So, we'll, you know, we're well set, I think. And... You know, President Trump, I think, has his own reasons for wanting a trade deal. He's up for re-election in November. He wants to boost the American economy. So a trade deal would be good for him, and it would potentially also be good for us. I mean, the only problem Mark, I foresee in this is that, uh, you know, they'll want us to take chlorinated chicken. And There's nothing wrong with chlorinated various, chicken. Well, yeah, look, 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 James, you know, we're not going to lower our environmental standards that we've been clear about that. But on, on the matter of chlorinated chicken, purely my personal view, right, it can't be that bad because otherwise millions of Americans would be dying every year, right? And they're not. No, they're getting fatter. So, well, yeah, but look, if you, if you want to put a piece of chlorinated chicken on the shelves in Tesco's or Sainsbury's <clears> or Lidl <throat> or whoever, <clears throat> and it's clearly labelled and it says, this is American chlorinated chicken, but maybe it's a bit cheaper... If people want to buy that, that's a matter of personal choice. If they don't want to buy that, they buy something else. Yeah, and yeah. I, think I agree with you. I agree. For nanny's sake, <clears throat> you, don't, you know, don't buy that. Mm. Well, if you don't want to buy it, you don't buy it, do you? Yeah. And EU scientists apparently say it's not actually dangerous for you. No, no, I know. I'm well, just well, winding well, well, him up. You know, I'm not, Ash, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, as your listeners will well know. But, you know, common sense suggests it can't be that bad because otherwise we'd have, you know, loads of Americans dying from it. As far yeah. as I'm aware, that's not gone on. Yeah. Now, how, uh, how America we should get sorted, you need to go over there yourself, Mark, and talk to them <laughs> and uh, see whether you can do something. <laughs> well, you're the chairman now, yeah. You're like, you're, you're, J James, that's that's very kind of you, but I'm yeah. sure, we, I'm yeah. sure our, our negotiators are more than up to it. Liz Truss. He's a very capable Secretary of State. Good, good, good. Um, also, I think we need to sort out this migrant problem, which is more harrowing by the day and depressing me an enormous amount. Well, we, you know, we, we do... One of the benefits of uh, leaving the European Union is that we take back control of our own borders. And, you know, that means we can have our own, you know, immigration policy. So... In terms of immigration, and I, I know you said migrants, but in terms of immigration... No, I'm talking about the problem now I'm seeing on the telly every day. I'm glad to say after I moaned about it, nobody was covering it. Uh, we've seen a child of six drown. Uh, we've seen today, I think it was the Greek side, shooting... I saw that yesterday. ...live yeah. ammunition yeah. Yeah. at uh, families in a boat. This is just not acceptable mm. in this day and age. 
No, James, James, no, nobody wants to see that. But ultimately, you know, when you, know, when you follow the chain back. Where are many of these migrants coming from? They're coming from the Middle East. Yep. Many of them have been displaced by the conflict in Syria. You know, we have a brutal regime in Syria. Yeah, but we can't turn our backs on them, Mark. We just no, no, can't. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, but I mean, what I'm, but what I'm saying is, James, you know, why do we have this problem in the first place? It's because you've got a brutal regime under Assad, backed up by the Russians... You know, and uh, Vladimir Putin, who is not exactly a champion of human rights. No, I agree. And, you know, we're all members of the United Nations and they seem to be the most useless organisation going. Well, there are all sorts of faults with the UN. But, you know, we do have a scheme for taking a number of migrants directly from that part of the world, but taking them directly, maybe picking some of them up in the camps. Mm. Because the difficulty is... If you encourage people to make that trek across Europe and then say, well, you know, if you get this far, we'll, we'll take you anyway, all you're doing is encouraging more and more and more people to make an extremely perilous journey. Yeah, that's the trouble, isn't it? So, you know, it, it is, I mean, yeah, it, it's, you know, it is an extremely, you know, it's kind of moral hazard, isn't it? It's an extremely difficult issue. Mm. And on one level, you can't do right for doing wrong. But this is different because this is them, them being forced by Turkey, isn't it? It's different to the ones who, who are choosing to make a dangerous voyage. These well, well, people... well, Turkey has changed its policy. Turkey came to an agree agreement with the, F with the rest of the EU that it, it would limit people being able to cross the Turkish border into Greece, into the European Union. And then for his own reasons, partly because Russians bombed Turkish troops, yeah. you know, Erdogan is now, President Erdogan of Turkey, has now, you know, changed that policy, which is, you know, which is leading to this temporary serious problem. But the ultimate problem is, is the nature of, this, of the Assad regime in Syria, and you'll never change it until he's gone. So mm. if he's gone, you're going to leave a power vacuum, like in Libya. Yeah, <clears throat> very true. But look, I mean, guys, these, these things are complicated. If they, were, if they had simple solutions, we would have done them long ago. But, but working from first principles... You know, the Syrian regime is brutal. It, it gassed its own people, you know, in basements in, you know, in towns in Syria. Yeah, they crossed that red line, didn't they? No one did it. No one's done anything. Well, well, you know, they're, you know they're, we're, we're, we're dealing with a brutal tyrant backed up by, you know, Vladimir Putin, who is, you know, who look at what the Russians did to us in Salisbury. You know, we're, these are not nice people. But, I mean, you know, like when we took the general out in uh, Iran, isn't that the, the way forward? Maybe just take Assad out? Well, um, one way or another, I, you know, I, I'm not going to publicly recommend on the radio that we do that, but one way or another, you know, eventually the world will be a better place without Assad in it, I think. Mm. Does that mean you might? Well, me personally, no, James. <laughs> I mean, I... I um, <laughs> I hung up my uniform very many years ago. <laughs> but what do you think would happen in Syria? I mean, who would take charge then? It, it, it's difficult to say. Um, there, are, there are competing power blocks in Syria, I think. He's not as... I don't think he's as absolutely secure as sometimes people make out. Mm. The only thing that's keeping him in office is Russian arms and Russian money, and everybody knows that. And Iran as you well, know, isn't and it? I, and, I, and I think the Russians have a real have lots of questions to answer about why they're behaving in that way. Yeah. Um, OK. Uh, also, listen, on Fridays, you know, I do uh, the first hour of the radio show is on telly too. Sir. And we talk about the news. How do you fancy coming on it this Friday, Mark? James, I would do, but I, I think I've got stuff in the constituency <laughs> this Friday, so I think that might be... Um, what, 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 uh, I think that might be difficult, but a Friday, I'm definitely up for it. All right, well, I'll hold you to that. And yeah. what's your view on the Pretty Patel situation? Uh, I'm a great fan of Pretty. She's a fellow Essex MP of mine. I think she's a very good Home Secretary. Uh, I think she knows her own mind. I think she's trying to carry out the manifesto pledges that we stood on about more police. And, you know, um, so I'm, I'm a very, very firm supporter of Pretty. 
It sounds to me as well that the civil servants are uh, getting a bit upset that they seem to be uh, being told what to do by the elected representatives and they don't seem to like it. There was talk and it's earlier. a woman as well, maybe that's a problem. Well, not just pretty, but a lot of other oh, yeah. uh, ministers are uh, But she's getting into worse, isn't she? Uh, and, and some of the civil servants are saying, well, we're not really trying as hard as we used to. That's not acceptable well, I mean, because what, what, we pay them. Well, correct. Uh, I mean, what, the old adage is still true, isn't it? Advisors advise mm. and ministers decide. Wasn't ministers that Thatcher? Democ- yeah. I mean, you know, ministers are democratically elected. But they're trying and, very hard now to sort of pull this, and it's going on everywhere as far as I can see. You tell somebody they're not doing a very good job or you tell somebody, you do, I want it done this way and no other way, and they all get all hysterical and then say, I'm being bullied. Well, look, you know, you've always had what you might call creative tension between ministers and civil servants. Well, why? I don't understand but not like it. It's not really going public. But hang on, it? the word is in the title, servants. They're not there to tell the ministers what to do. The ministers ought to know what they're doing. That's how they become ministers, I thought. And having the civil servants there, obviously, oh, I've been a civil servant for years. I told them not to do it. I told this one. No. Arrogant, isn't it? Yeah, and, the, and it, doesn't, it doesn't really change anything. And one of the reasons we don't see huge changes in this country, I think, is because the civil servants are doing really what they consider to be the best thing. Oh. Well, look, James, I, you know, for, for, you know, you and I, forgive me, in the nicest possible way, and possibly, Ash, you're old enough to remember Yes Minister. And then, yes, Prime Minister, which was that brilliant series. No, um, no, um, no, Nigel no. Ford and all the others, you know, <laughs> no, about, the, about the relate, exactly this relationship between oh. politicians and civil servants. You know, and as someone who was a great fan of that programme, if anything, the way I remember it, it was the civil servants that bullied the hapless minister and not the other way around. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, whereas, you know, uh, uh, Pretty Patel is anything but hapless. I think she's an extremely good uh, Home Secretary. I think she's doing a blooming good job. And if there are some civil servants in the Home Office who have a difficulty with that, well, I'm sorry about that, but she's the democratically elected politician and not them.